Greetings from Tokyo. I'm Trip, and welcome to the Hammer of Wrath. This week, you and I are going to paint a Ravenwing Apothecary. Let's go. Thanks for joining me in the studio. This week, I'm going to show you how I kitbashed a Primaris Ravenwing Apothecary. But first, I want to talk about bowling. So as you saw in the opening segment, bowling is very much a thing here in Japan. And despite the lack of real estate one might expect in Tokyo, if you look hard enough, you can find bowling alleys. Now, if you're wondering, yes, they have the same sort of sad, desperate to be cool energy that bowling alleys in America have. Now, I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that most of the equipment is provided by the same companies like Brunswick, where all the interiors feel the same, from the ball returns and benches to decor, and even the screens that have the cheesy animations when you get a strike. Either way, my kids had a blast, and to be honest, it had been a long time since I'd been in a bowling alley. Now, before we get started with this week's video, just a quick note. I'm having a lot of fun doing this, and I think I want to do it full time. Currently, I'm a freelance industrial designer, and I work remotely with companies from Australia and the US, but to be honest, making these videos is the most fun I've had in a long time. And that's saying something, given the fact that I've spent 20 years in the toy industry. But I need your help. I'm very close to being partnered with YouTube, and that would make a huge difference for me. So please, take a moment, watch some of the older videos. There are several videos in my library that didn't get a lot of views, and some of them are actually really helpful, like the tutorial on applying flawless painted on looking decals. So if you can, after you watch this video, take a minute and watch one or two more. Either way, the feedback you've been giving me is absolutely incredible, and I can't thank you enough. So, let's talk about kitbashing Primaris Ravenwing, specifically an apothecary to join our Ravenwing command squad. Now, I don't do firstborn marines. I had an entire 2500 point firstborn ultramarine successor chapter army, but I sold that off years ago. Looking back at those old firstborn sculpts, I don't know how we ever thought they were cool. Ultimately, the proportions are just kind of laughable. Really, in hindsight, they look really ridiculous. But I wanted a Ravenwing command squad, and knowing that I don't do firstborn, I did the only natural thing, which was to take the Outriders from the Indomitus box and the Ravenwing command squad and just sort of smash them together. So let's get started, and I'll show you how I did my Ravenwing Primaris Apothecary. I actually started this conversion project shortly after I got the Indomitus box in 2020 and I kitbashed all three characters from the Ravenwing Command Squad, which includes not only the Apothecary I'm about to show you, but also a Ravenwing Ancient and a Ravenwing Champion. If we take a closer look at the Ravenwing Apothecary here, of course we're using the Outrider as a base, but we've taken several parts here from the Ravenwing Command Screws meant for the Firstborn Apothecary. You'll notice that the left arm with the Narthesium is from that kit, as well as the Shoulder Pauldron, the Backpack, and several bits that are spread around the model, including the bed roll and knife in the front, as well as the wings from the fairing. Now, I've never been a big fan of the fairing that sticks up in the front, so I snipped those off and glued them to the sides for a more streamlined appearance. I've also used the Primaris Apothecary head, as I didn't use it in my original Primaris Apothecary. And there were also some extra bits from that backpack, which I've attached here as well. Now lastly, you'll notice the dual plasma talons, those actually took a little effort. Before I fully assembled the Outrider itself, I had to take nippers, tear away at the plastic, and then file and sand everything down to make an alcove for the plasma talons to be glued in. I primed and base coated the model and finished the base first, but you'll notice that in handling it, the paint has started to wear off. I dry brushed the body of the motorcycle using a combination of dark gray and lead belcher to bring out the details and then set about working my way around the model, painting all the metallic details using lead belcher. Here I'm just painting the calipers and tools, as well as the exhausts on the power pack, and then I paint the rims of the wheels. No need to be tidy here, as those will be covered with the paint we'll use for the tires. And then finally I set about painting the exhaust pipes. Now a perfect paint for this next step would be Games Workshop's Contrast Apothecary White. But since I didn't have any, I simply mixed up a cold gray with lots of water, painted it over the model, and let it flow into the recesses. Once that had dried, I brought out all my flat surfaces and high panels by using Games Workshop's Corax White. 
I want to take a minute to acknowledge the tightly knit and really incredible patron community that we've started. Our Mallet Bearers, Adam Fox and Josh Hannon. Our Sledgehammer members, Cody Newton and Joshua Kreba. And of course, our Thunderhammer Bearers, Matt Mitchum and The Rascal. And once the Corex white was dry, I went in with some white ink and hit all the high surfaces of the model to make the white really pop. I then shaded all my metallics using Nuln Oil, and when that had fully dried, I then went back in with Lead Belcher and retouched all the surfaces to bring out the highlights. In order to create a heat effect on the exhaust pipes, I used a glaze of Seraphim Sepia, and when that had dried, Drucci Violet. I painted the joints on the Under Armour and the chest emblem using Fenrisian Grey, and when that was dry, applied Basiliconum Grey Contrast in order to bring out the shadows and highlights in a single pass. I painted the tires using Vallejo Charcoal Grey. It has exceptional coverage, goes on in a single coat, but to really sell the rubber effect, we're then going to dry brush using a Rust Grey, and then finish with a wash of Basiliconum Grey Contrast. Once that was out of the way, I moved on to the wings. Here, I'm using Gulliman Glaze. Now, of course, this is a paint that Games Workshop no longer makes, so a modern equivalent would be one of the many blues that they make in the contrast range. And we're gonna brush that along all of these feather shapes, let that settle into the recesses. Next, in preparation for the use of another contrast paint, I'm going to apply a khaki here along the bedroll in two thin coats. And when that's dry, I'm going to apply Contrast Wildwood Honestly, one of my favorite contrast paints makes an exceptional leather. Once that's all set, I'm gonna to move to the other side of the model and paint his pistol holster using Worn Fang Brown. Now here, I decided to do some weathering on the model in the form of chipping damage with a sponge, but you'll see later I decided against this and I actually repainted all of the white areas that I did. Returning to the holster, I applied Agrax Earthshade, and when that was dry, I edge highlighted the holster using a combination of Worn Fang Brown and Kislev Flesh. Using that same Worn Fang Brown, I undercoated all my gold areas and then started working my way around the model using Retributor Armor. And then I finished my golds by applying a wash of Rikulin Flesh Shade Gloss. And when that was dry, brought out the highlights with Auric Armor Gold. With the blue glaze we applied to the wing panels fully dry, it's time to bring them back up to a pure white and in this case, it's just a matter of hard work and a lot of motor control. Using Corax White, we work our way around all the panels very carefully, hitting each feather individually. And once that's dry, we return with White Scar to do it all over again to bring each feather up to a pure white. From there on, we're in the home stretch. It's just a matter of finishing off the small details that are all around the model, including the lamp on his power pack, the lenses on his face, and the purity seals around the model. The last thing I had to do was repair the base. Unlike most models, I had finished it first, and in handling the model, the paint had rubbed off, so we finished that with some Steel Legion drab. Well, there you have it, one Ravenwing Primaris Apothecary to join our Ravenwing Command Squad, which includes an Ancient and a Champion. I hope you enjoyed the video. It was my genuine pleasure to make and share it with you. If you'd like to support the channel, just like, comment, and subscribe. Share the videos on your social channels, or you can always check out the Patreon linked in the description below. And lastly, I run an online t-shirt shop, bakingsodatees.com where I create one-of-a-kind, unique designs available nowhere else shipped directly to you. Thanks again for your support, and I'll see you on the next one.